Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 16. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about what is the difference between authentication ID and authorization ID. So an authentication ID will be uh, used for like username and password val validation. So what happens is for this particular username, this is the password. So that is that kind of validation will happen on an authentication ID. Once a user is authenticated, then for that particular user, a authorization ID will be assigned. So that authorization ID will be used for uh, authorities and privileges will be granted on the database based on the authorization ID. So uh, like a security administrator of the database will uh, use the grant statements. So uh, he'll grant uh, say DBADM access or SysADM access or uh, connect privilege. So authorities and privileges will be granted uh, the ID that we are mentioning in the grant statement is actually not authentication ID, but it is authorization ID. Okay, and authentication ID lives outside the DB2 system. So, uh, like it can be from an OS or it can be from LDAP or it can be how the security layer is implemented for DB2. It is based on that. And uh, whereas uh, authorization ID lives inside the DB2 system. So, like when you issue the grant statements, right? So, what you are providing there is authorization id and db2 knows okay for this authorization id these are all the authorities and privileges so it is stored in the db2 it lives inside the db2 okay, we'll exactly uh, look uh, for the differences with uh, examples okay first i am just uh, showing you uh, the configuration, uh, the plugin configuration. So here you can see the authentication is happening at the server side, okay, and there is no uh, password plugin that is used. There is no group plugin that is used, okay. And the next thing that we are uh, showing is the OS user, how the OS is set up. So in the OS, there is a user DB2 INST1. His password is DB2 INST1. His group is DB2 IADM. So he'll be the instance owner. And there is also another user Penny, whose password is pvat. Okay, and uh, this Penny user belongs to the group users. Okay, so I'm just showing that. Okay, copy. And if you look at uh, there is no user like Sheldon or Cooper or Scooper. There is no user at the OS uh, with these names Sheldon, Cooper, and Scooper. Okay, so first, what we'll do is we'll look at the default case, okay, where uh, the user authentication and group lookup is happening at the OS level. So, for that, we are updating the uh, DBM CFG parameters, then we are starting the data instance, then uh, activating the database. Let's just do that. Okay. Then what I'm doing is I'm connecting as DB2 INST1 using DB2 INST1. So this is the U OS user and password. And I'm just uh, looking at the uh, what the authority uh, this DB2 INST1 uh, processes. Okay. And after that, I'm granting DBADM access on database to Scooper. Actually, Scooper, there is no user ID in the OS like Scooper, and there is no user ID in the OS like pvat. Okay. So Penny is only the OS user, pvat is a password. Okay. So there is no OS user like pvat. But even then, I'm just granting the dbadm privileges okay so connect to user test yes connected and look at here this particular sys adm so the user db2 inst1 see here you can see user db2 inst1 okay 
and the SQL authorization ID. See, this is same. So this will be same in the OS. So when you are using authentication as OS layer, it is kind of difficult to see the authentication happening in a different way and authorization in a different way. Okay. So this particular user db 2 nst one got authenticated at the OS and the authorization ID and the authentication ID here, they are both the same. Okay. And you can look at the authority. So sysadm is uh, having the sysadm authority and this particular db2 inst1 now has granted dbadm to scooper and pvat so these two are actually authorization ids these are not authentication ids so we'll, we'll demonstrate that so again we are running few uh, uh, authority queries here okay to get the authority look at this the first one is uh, so I'm sending the auth authority ID as penny so penny doesn't have dbadm access so penny as a authorization ID doesn't have any dbadm access pvat as a authorization ID has dbadm access okay so that that's how we have granted it and scooper is one authorization ID again that also has dbadm access okay so like that that is how it is set okay Now I'm going to connect to the database using uh, user penny using pvat. So this is the OS user. Okay. And once I do the connect, I select uh, some data from table A. Okay. So here you will see the user again is penny here. The authorization ID is also penny here. They are same. But now look at the select star from table A query. It says you do not have required authorization so the user uh, penny or the authorization id penny does not have the required uh, authorization or privilege to access the table okay because it is a os user and the authorization id is not we have not granted dbadm to penny we have granted only to pvat okay so now in order to uh, see the difference between the authentication and authorization we are configuring the LDAP plugin okay so what we are doing here is we are uh, trying to use the authentication uh, plugin IBM LDAP auth server the user ID password authentication uh, is from the LDAP server okay like that I am updating now okay and the plugin file is all already copied it's there in place okay and there is a uh, IBM LDAP security.ini now this is one important file okay I'll show you this See, in this file we are going to configure that okay so here is the file wherein the LDAP uh, uh, IP address uh, is given okay and what is the user object class so this is like configuring the uh, LDAP uh, security plugin so so th this is all there okay now here look at this one user ID attribute I am giving as CN okay which means the common name and auth ID attribute is given as UID okay so this will be used for authentication purposes and this will be used for authorization purposes so user will be authenticated using the common name but once that user is authenticated the authorization id will come from the attribute uid okay. what i mean by that is so this is the uh, ldap contents okay so this is how the user ids are all set up in the ldap server so there is a root node o equal to big bang theory under that you have o u equal to actors so under that you have uid db2 inst1 see look at here this is the one that we are talking about so here the common name is also db2 inst1 surname is also db2 inst1 uid is also db2 inst1 so even if you use for authentication db2 inst1 the authorization is also db2 inst1 okay look at now this particular user okay sheldon so this particular user you can see these three entries the common name is sheldon surname is cooper uid is scooper so 
for authentication sheldon will be used for authorization scooper will be used so similarly there is another entry uidp vat so look at this so the common name is penny surname is vat the uid is pvat so if the penny user connects the ldap penny user connects she will be able to connect using the user id penny but her authorization id will be pvat okay that's what i'm going to show you demonstrate now okay. so let's close this okay. let's stop start and activate the database Of a successful starting, activating. So now, when I connect to the database using DB to INST one, so this is OS username and OS password. So it won't connect because the authentication comes from the LDAP now. Okay, so it did not get connected. Now this one will get connected because uh, it is the LDAP user name and password that I am giving. and i am trying to get the authority so let's run that quickly see the connection got successful so again here the db to inst1 inst1 is the same because that's how it is set up in the ldap also now it has the cdm access okay so connect reset so nothing no surprises here now look at the next one so i am trying to connect as uh, user penny Uh, using penny vat this is again the os user this will not get connected the second statement should get connected because that's the ldap username and password okay see so look at here now the user id that we are passing is penny but the sql authorization id is pvat see so this is what the common name is used as authentication purposes the authorization id is got from the uid attribute of the ldap right so that's what i was showing you so now it is different right so this is the thing so the authentication id can be different the authorization id can be different the authentication id will be used only for the authentication purposes authorization id will be used for the privileges and other things authority and privileges so we'll check that now okay once we got connected we can easily check that by running the auth uh, routine auth id routine you can see here for penny user there is no db adm access whereas for pvat authorization id pvat the db adm access is there so since that access is there that person should be able to select uh, records see it's now accessible because of the db adm access and also and another important thing is now i cannot connect as user pvat using ldap penny like this is the user id attribute that i am giving okay this also won't work i can only because this pvat is actually the uh, authorization id attribute so that's how we have mapped in the uh, security ini file so it, you have to use like uh, penny only like this only you have to use okay similarly we can do for uh, user sheldon also so connect to user sheldon using ldap sheldon will get connected okay but look at his authorization id is scooper and since we have granted for authorization id scooper db adm the selection is also successful the select query is successful so connect reset and the same way we cannot connect using scooper as a authentication id because it is only a authorization id we cannot connect using that okay 
that's it so this is the difference between the authentication id and authorization id okay okay thanks for watching uh, that's it in this video tutorial uh, please subscribe to my channel db2 luw academy uh, see you in next tutorial bye bye